people who are floating a Chris Christie or or a Rudy Giuliani or somebody more partisan or more mm-hmm. political? What what what's what are you hearing on on that front? Uh, the White House is not, you know, on the record saying here's who our list is. We know all the people that were interviewed over the weekend are certainly that first batch of people that they were considering. Will this be it? Probably not. I think there will be more people interviewed uh, in the coming days. The president says he wants to have a fast decision on this. He likes the list he's been given. He said it's the highest level contenders right now. But here's something to note. There's no deadline to do this. There is an acting director right now of the FBI. But the president is leaving on Friday for his first foreign trip. So if he wants to do this before then, the clock is ticking a bit. Otherwise, we're not looking at until perhaps after Memorial Day. Uh, It would seem strange for him to make the announcement while overseas. Yeah, this is a very busy two weeks for the president. Mm -hmm. So he has all all of his normal duties, plus trying to pick an, an FBI director. No timeline as to when he might pick one. No, they, they, he just said he wants it to be a fast decision, but that's it. All right. What about uh, Charles Schumer, senator from New York, saying that the FBI director will not get a vote uh, on unless uh, mm-hmm. certain things happen? Does he have the power to stop that? No. I mean, well, they could certainly play some hardball, but here's the thing. Like, they could say we don't want a vote. We, we won't agree on a vote for a replacement for Jim Comey unless there's a special prosecutor name for the FBI investigation. You also had Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut, a Democrat, say he'd vote against any confirmation of an FBI director unless there is support for a special prosecutor. But ultimately, it's the Department of Justice that has to uh, decide on that. You know, the pressure on Republicans in the Senate, they're not the ones that would appoint that position. And right now, the administration is showing zero inclination that they would go down that route. And the dev- you don't need 60 votes, right? It's mm-hmm. just a 50. Uh, it's a right. 50, I believe that's what it is. 50 mm-hmm. vote deal. Yeah. 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 Um, ha- ha- I know it's Monday morning after a uh, very busy week, and Saturday Night Live took their cuts and scrapes at the president. Yeah. And he's getting ready. What's what's the thought as you go in for work uh, this morning? Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of yeah, in terms of everything, I staff, mean, yeah, staff yeah. and everything else. I mean, it's been you know rumors o- o- mm-hmm. over the weekend. Half of them are going to show up today. They're all getting yeah. getting fired. What what's the feeling there? I mean, everybody. Sean Spicer has a briefing scheduled for one thirty p.m. Eastern time this afternoon. I think what the White House wants to do this week is get a handle on the narrative, and that was something that they could not do last week, which was remarkable when you get, consider that the president could go out and give a speech at any time, hold a press conference at any time, and that would dominate the headlines. He fires Jim Comey on Tuesday night. The press staff seemed to be caught very off guard and couldn't get a handle on the evolving explanations for this, the reaction to it. The president himself said he was surprised at how strong the criticism was of this decision. But the president didn't do anything last week uh, to change that narrative. Wednesday, he had the closed meetings with the Russians. Uh, Then Friday, he did change the narrative, sort of, with that tweet about Jim Comey and threatening to release tapes of their conversations. This week, the president sits down with three world leaders at the White House. There's going to be a lot of conversation about the upcoming foreign trip. They want to try and get a handle on the conversation a bit more. Was Sean Spicer really hiding in the bushes, or was he having a conversation next to the hedges, and this has sort of taken on a life of its own? The latter. It's certainly taken on a life of its own. If you were ever to pull back, you know, that shot that you always see where all the correspondents are on the North Lawn outside right. the White House. Right. It's kind of framed, ringed in shrubbery. Uh, you know, I have to walk through shrubbery to get to our camera location <laughs> every afternoon when I go and tape for TV. So it, it's just kind of the way it looked. They weren't, you know jumping in and out of bushes hiding they just weren't able to be seen by reporters who were gathering in a driveway at that point and and how much of donald trump not holding daily briefings or calling Mm -hmm. off these daily briefings how much of that is him blowing off steam and actually really doing it i mean i think ultimately it would be the president just uh blustering right now. I don't think it would serve their purpose if there were no questions asked. I mean, the press briefing obviously is a chance for reporters to ask questions, ask tough questions, but it is the chance for the press staff and the White House to get their record or their message on the record. Putting out a statement doesn't really do the same thing, uh, given the hyper media that we have right now. Never a dull moment. Karen Travers, thanks for uh, helping us uh, navigate it. ABC News White House correspondent. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. You got it. She, she has to go through the shrubbery to get to the TV s- spot. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, that's Sean Spicer. There, there's no need to pile on uh, that poor guy. He was not hiding in the bushes. He was just... <laughs>
He was next to the shrubbery, and it's taken on a life of its own. All right. Uh, 657.